So today we're going to learn how to make a pirate's map. First job is we'll teach you how to actually make the map material itself. When the map material is made, it's going to look something like this. What you'll need, a piece of hard card. You can buy this in large size and cut it down, or you can just get single sheets. This size, smaller, doesn't matter. Just a little bit harder than regular paper. However, if you do use lighter paper, like this, the advantage is that when you cover it, at least it's thin enough, it'll allow you to roll up the map. I bought some gauze, just from the dollar store. Just comes wrapped like this, and just unwrap it so that it's the same length as the width of the paper. Some scissors to cut it down. And I found with this size of paper, I need about four lengths of the gauze to cover it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so once I've got my four bits of gauze, or how many pieces you need to lay out and cover over top of the paper, I then need to make up my mixture to glue this down. What you'll need for the mixture is some liquid glue. I like the clear stuff, but white will be fine. Need a container, like a glass jar. You'll need some coffee grinds. Make sure it's ground coffee, not bean coffee. You will know, put the coffee grinds into the glass jar. The more you put, the darker the color will be. I like a fairly light color. It's a bit easier to draw on. The more coffee you put in, the darker the color will get. And you need some boiling water. Now, if I put my water into this jar with the coffee grounds, I will actually get a mixture that will have little bits of coffee ground stuck to my paper, which is fine. I'll hold this one up a bit closer and you can see it. Between the drawings, there are some coffee grounds stuck on there. Personally, I don't like the coffee grinds stuck on there. So I'm going to put my coffee into a bowl and my hot water in. Again, more water you put in, the lighter the color. Less water, the darker the coffee, the darker the color on the paper. And this bottom has a filter, so when I pour the water out, I won't get all the little coffee grinds themselves. So I've got some filtered coffee. I'm going to take my glue and add lots of glue straight to this jar. And my paintbrush to stir it all up. All right, and so you can see I've got my fabric bandages. My my gauze lined up along my piece of paper and I'm going to take my coffee water mixture and glue and with a paintbrush I'm going to dab the fabric on. I find it easiest to do the edges and you want to do this dabbing motion not a brushing motion. If you do the brushing motion you can see the fabric gets all messed up. So it's a dabbing motion and do all the edges first. What happens is the glue and water mixture soaks through the bandage and that will make it stick. All right, here we go. And I'll do between the bandages. Okay, once I've got all my edges done and in between the bandages dabbed on with my glue and coffee mixture, it's a little easier to then get the rest of it without the 
bandages shifting and rolling. However, if they do roll and you get little bubbles and, and parts that stick up, it just adds more to the texture. So let's go and cover the rest of this now. If you do end up with any gaps where the fabric's gone and moved, you can just straighten that back out with your finger or with the paintbrush even. Get it all smooth and lined up. But again, if you get these little bumps, no big deal. Kind of adds to the texture. And as you can see with this one, because I had put some of the coffee grinds in there to begin with, I've got some of the little black coffee grinds all over the paper and that's okay. It adds again to some of the texture to it. So I'm gonna go move this one to the drying rack and I would give it a good two days at least to dry out. All right, so I've got my dried paper here looking like old, old map paper that would have been used by pirates. And I'm gonna draw an outline of my island. Again, I'm not worried about little tears and bumps, just uh, adds a little bit more texture to it. So I'm gonna draw out the shape of an island, just a rough, jagged coast, not really anything design other than to fill up the paper area here for a river Maybe a bay in here I'll leave some room for some ocean around it and if you don't want to draw with pencil crayon first you can always draw with pencil if you're going to draw with pencil first, I prefer to use like a, a primary pencil, nice and big and thick, or a drafting pencil. And they just, they don't break as easy. Let's see, we draw some little islands off to the coast here as well. And you see the, the thick pencils leave a nice thick line as well, so a little easier to see. Let's do some islands over here. And then we need to start adding some things into our island. So maybe I'll do a, a river flows into the island, put another river up here, this one maybe it'll branch off, maybe another river up here, then we can start adding some features, I like to do palm trees, palm trees you just do two lines like that, and some leaves on the top. lines on the palm tree. Maybe we'll make some, some boulders and rocks up here. It's going to be a rocky area. Another palm tree in here. Maybe I'll put a lake over here. A lake or a marshland. Put a little river connecting to that river. Maybe I'll make a little village here. So I'll do some squares with some triangles on top. Give a little door. Let's do a bunch of huts. Yeah, maybe we'll make a, a bridge that will cross the river here. And why don't we add some really tall, jagged mountains. There's a mountain peak that has two jagged ends to it. And maybe down here we'll do some hills. These are just hills and this hill here, maybe we'll even have a, a cave. I just like to sometimes draw little lines and connect my river into the hills. And let's do some more palm trees. And 
Maybe down here we'll do a, a graveyard. We'll do a tombstone. Maybe a, a cross. And maybe in here we'll do skull and crossbones. So I'm going to draw a skull, kind of a flattened circle. But on the bottom, I'm going to put in the teeth. Give it a couple of eyes. Kind of a triangle nose. We'll do some crossbones. Kind of a bit of an upside down W. The bone coming straight like that. Again, a W shape. Then the other bone's got to come this way. the eyes will be colored in dark. Maybe up here we can make this a, a marshland, swampy. So we'll have like cattails and weeds that would grow out of a marsh. And the water here, well, we'll need a ship. So I'm going to draw the back part of the ship here. The ship going down, and it's, it's going to be in the water, so draw some waves. The front part of the ship coming up. This long bow. Get some portholes. And of course, it needs some tall mass with maybe a crow's nest on the top. Some flags. It needs its sails. Of course, our ocean should be dangerous, so maybe we'll do a, a sea monster over here. Got his tail coming up in the middle of his body, his head coming up. I want to draw some, some waves. Sometimes it's good just to along the island edge, drawing some wiggly lines just along the edge of the islands. So we've got a sea monster there. Maybe what we'll do is we'll put some sharks here, so we'll draw some more waves and then with some, some shark fins coming out of the water. Shark infested waters. Up here we could do our compass rows. So I'll do a triangle as thin and long like that. A round circle. Another triangle that's long and skinny like that. One on this side. This side, maybe some smaller ones in between. We could put some of our directions like north. There's our compass rose for telling direction. Now I've made a very detailed map here. Yours can be much simpler. It doesn't have to be an island. It could just have a passage that you might want to follow. Why don't we do another monster over here? Let's do a big round octopus head with some arms coming up. And then of course one of the last things we need to do is we need to put in where we would find the treasure. So I think I'll, I'll choose right up here to do my X. And I'm going to do my dotted Pathway Trail. So there's our detailed map. 
both on the water and in the land with the X marks the spot. What I have left to do is to do some coloring. Personally, I like using pencil crayons on this, but felt markers would work just as well. Okay, I'm gonna add some color now. And there we go, and we have our completed map. You can leave the edges rough, or you can cut and tear pieces into it. In this original one, I made some tears and some cuts, and some bends, cut some pieces out, even glued a few extra little pieces on as well. <laughs> 